Hello friends, I hope you are doing great at your place and we are going to continue with the employment information but we have a different topic that is base pay and year to date income. How to calculate base pay, how to calculate year to date income or say why, why to calculate year to date income. So let's see base, base pay. What is base pay? When it comes to base pay, there, there is a possibility that you know when you open a pay stub, you saw that all the essential things what I you know discussed in my previous video, those are available in, in the pay stub, but there are more than that. So when it when I say more than that, that it could be like there is a written a base pay. Now we know the formula how to calculate the base pay if it's an hourly then on the hourly basis if it's on the you know, weekly basis or bi-weekly basis or semi-monthly whatever the frequency is given on the pay stub we can calculate because we know what is the formula to calculate that income right you can also see the same on the screen right now but but if how to determine what is the base pay amount when I say base pay amount that means there could be like base pay of dollar 300 right but there are other other uh, you know uh, that is vacation it could be vacation that borrower was paid for vacation dollar 200 fine then a board was also paid for a sick that was dollar 100 and bar was also paid for holiday holidays and that could be dollar 200 again okay now there there are whenever you see all these components we are going to club that or we are going to add this because or you need to uh, you know identify what is the pay frequency for that and you want to check the hours what hours bar worked then it could be like he has been paid base base only for uh, 50 hours we know that 50 hours neither it's weekly neither it's bi-weekly neither it's semi-monthly right so we can also identify that okay he was paid for around 15 hours for vacation he was almost paid for uh, 10 hours for for uh, for sick and holiday he was again paid for 10 hours or say he was paid for 10 10 hours for for all these components so now if we, we are going to rub it 50 plus 10 plus 10 it will become around 80 and we know 80 hours means by weekly income right so that is the one one scenario the other is maybe uh, these uh, these are the components which always need to be added into the base pay. So what would be the base pay for, for these hours? 3, 5, 6 and 8. So borrower, actual base pay will be or regular pay which we are going to consider that would be $800, not the $300. Okay, that is why I am telling you. There could be n number of components but these are the three three uh, component which, which will always be a part of base income. So whenever you see there are different different components written in, uh, in borrowed pay stuff, that time you need to go and you need to add all these all these components into the base income and on the basis of that you are going to calculate the income. You know the formula how to calculate income. Okay? Great. I'm going to or we are moving now to whited income. Let's see. Let's uh, you know before before uh, getting into the formula. My question is why? What is the need of getting that whited income or calculating whited income itself? What is the need? What happens? Maybe we have three pay stubs. Now we saw there was the income that was dollar eight hundred base pay, right? This was the base pay income for 800. Now, 
we see of another pay stub that is consecutive to this one but that is the base pay of dollar 600 maybe they, you have more pay stubs and those are showing dollar 300 and even dollar 1000 okay this is how your pay stub pay stub number 1 base pay 800 base pay 600 300 1000 now which pay we are going to consider fine right? because at every pay stub borrower is receiving a different type you know different amount so we cannot we cannot uh, make any average amount uh, okay this would be his average amount so to calculate the pay, uh, average amount what we need to do okay we need to go to that okay maybe it was the pay frequency for uh, 1 to 14 that it was 15 to uh, 29 that is how it may be the previous one 1 to 14 again and uh, next may be 15 to 29 okay this could be like that in, in this I mean it's it's a, these are the dates okay this is for one month this is for another month so these are the pay frequencies we do not know uh, what income or what base pay income uh, would be an average so to calculate the uh, average income we need to check what is it why did it till the date till date maybe it's today is uh, you know 8 31 uh, to 2020 this would be the date let's assume this is the date so now for borrower is or, or uh, the pay stub is almost covering 8 month right 8 months so maybe YTD is given, uh, maybe given uh, around around eight thousand dollars till now. I mean, borrow from the first of January till eight thirty first August, borrow almost earned eight thousand dollars. Fine. This is what the YTD year to date. This is the year to date eight thousand till eight thirty first. Borrow earned around eight thousand dollars. Now. Because on the basis of this income, every pay stub is giving us a different base pay or different regular income or different income. So we cannot make out what should be his monthly income or according to whether I should calculate his monthly income according to 800, whether I should calculate his income according to 6, according to 3 or 1000. If I am going to calculate according to 1000, it is going to be huge. If I am going to calculate according to 300 it is going to be very less so in that case let's go to the YTD income what is the YTD income so year to date income is in this in this scenario it's around 8000 so now I know I have 830 uh, first so it's almost covering 8000 8000 uh, sorry uh, 8 months of the income so I can divide it by 8 right straight away I can go to because I know it's the 8 month so I can divide it by 8 and it is going to be around $1000 per month according to YTD borrower earn average $1000 per month let's suppose what if it's not 831st but it is maybe no, 815 in that case how we are going to calculate this average income in that case first we need to convert this 15 into the month so how to calculate maybe it's you know the number of days number of days that is 15 these are the number of days those are 15 fine now these num number of days are here 15 and what is the total uh, days in a month? 31st in the month of August, 31st. So 15 divided by 31st, right? 31st are the days and 15 are the total days he worked out of 31st. So if we are going to divide 15 by 31st, it is going to be around 0.5. Okay, 0.5. Or 0.50. So now, instead of where I am 
uh, dividing 8000 with 8, I need to divide it by because from August, 1st of August, it was in borrower already completed or all, already earned for 7 months. So 7.5, so what would be 7.5 and that is how I can divide 8000 into 7.5 and then then my monthly income would be according to that. Okay, let's if you need one more scenario we can we can go for that as well. Let's see if if uh, uh, maybe YTD date or whatever 8000 or 10,000 maybe you know it is uh, maybe 10 and 5 2020 if this is the date if this is the date year to date then how we are going to calculate we know that I mean it, it doesn't matter if you, if you if you calculate it by 31 or 30 that is fine so even if you want to calculate it by with 30 so what 5 divided by 30 would come around point 16 days so now I know what is the total number of days 9 because it's 10th so 9 months already completed plus 0.16 so these are the number of months and now I can divide with 8 whatever the divided amount it would be 9.16 now you need to tell me if I am going to give you a date 10 18 2020 what would be the total number of months right this is the date you need to calculate tell me what is the what is the number of months that you are going to divide with or that amount what is the amount you are going to divide with so calculate according to this date what would be the total number of number of months you know that is how I calculated and what would be the number of months this is question for you you can write the answer in the in your in your comments and then from there we will continue with with this okay now the YTD amount why why we got to you know calculate YTD amount that I told you the first scenario where we will have we will not be having we will be having multiple uh, pay stubs but we will not be having you know consistent amount I mean it, every amount is going to be inconsistent sometimes it, one pay stub is showing that borrower made $800 one is showing that $1,000 then $1,200 or maybe one is showing huge amount and one is very less amount in that case instead of we still need to calculate any we can calculate income as per the most recent pay stub but because we are not sure this is the you know true value or true earning then we need to go to okay let's take out an average till the date that is how we are going to calculate the YTD income right now there is another scenario maybe you know borrower is is a seasonal employee he only works for the first four months then season is off then he take a leave for another four months and at the last four months he again work right so in that case we know that first four months and the last four months in between there are four months gap so in that case again we cannot go for a monthly income so in that case we need to again go for the weekly income till the uh, you know at the last phase of whatever amount he he make we can we can consider and we can calculate according to that i mean whatever the amount for the whole year he earned then it need to be divided if we have the last pay stuff we can calculate it by 12 or according to that whatever the amount what the amount he earned in the entire year okay uh, there are different scenario uh, could be more scenario as well you know to why to why to calculate what income when when we maybe uh, 
we will be uh, when we will be uh, going for maybe you know average income for the previous two years like this year borrower income is very high but the previous year borrower borrower had a less you know income his earnings were uh, low in that case we cannot give him uh, you know as per the worst case scenario we cannot go entirely with the previous year income but to give him some advantage because maybe borrower got some kind of hike in this year or maybe uh, borrower uh, got promotion and that is why borrower income has been increased but it it's not at the end of the year but at the start of the year so in that case what i would do i would take divided income for those initial months maybe it's it's month of march or april i could go for the divided income and then so divided income for the four months in that case plus previous year income right previous year income so suppose borrower pay stub is showing uh, 430 2020 this is the pay stub income now i got to know this is the divided income of the four months right four months complete four months plus previous year income previous year income that is around maybe of uh, $10000 okay so now whatever the four year plus 10000 but i am going to divide that with 12 month of the previous year now four so total 16 month maybe 10000 and here he got 4000 so 14000 income i am going to calculate with 16 month to average out for the last last 16 month this is the income were earned okay current year by by the months even if it's the, instead of 30 if there is something like 4 or 16 then i am going to cal- divide 16 you know divided by 30 and then 3. Point, or 3.5 or 3.5 or 4 whatever my uh, you know those months those will be included with 12 month in four of the previous year plus those 3.5 so 15 point it will come around 15 point 15 point 5 that is how so i am going to calculate and it will be average income to the previous years that is why uh, i'm i'm sure that you got an idea why we need to calculate by the income and why it is so much important that we need to check whether the income should be there always in the pay stub okay now in the pay stub there are few more things which are tax deductions because we know that it's mandatory whoever earning tax deduction always should be there tax if you want to there are three type of tax deductions those are mandatory one is med- medical medical tax med tax or we can say federal medical tax then ss tax that is social security tax right and the final one is the federal tax right these are the taxes which here which always it will be there and if you want to calculate whether that if you come account you know come around some species activity that there is some species activity in the paste of mine there is some fudging has been done or paste of is not authentic in that case you can go to simply go to google you check what is the you know tax deductions for that current year uh, like sss uh, it, it is almost 6.2 right when it comes to med, med it's 0.125 and uh, federal that again need to be checked from the website what is the amount that is being deducted this year from the pay stubs and according to that whatever the amount they they earned or borrower earned on the came on on that amount you can simply deduct or calculate what what would be the tax deductions for this year fine okay now there there could be more uh, more deductions as well so these are the uh, deductions that are related to tax now other other deductions could also be there what are those deductions those deductions always need to be taken care maybe the borrower took some loan from the employer and each month you know 
he is paying that back and that 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 loan amount does not appear on the credit report so we always need to check whether there is any loan loan amount deduction right and loan amount loan amount if any loan is being you know maybe dollar 100 is are deducted are being deducted from his earnings so in that case we know that we first we need to check what is the frequency of that pay stub and as we calculate income according to that we need to calculate this amount as well on the maybe it's a bi weekly basis then i need to i need to calculate that uh, this 100 dollars what is if it is being deducted for uh, you know bi weekly then what would be the monthly amount deductions okay so you can go back to our your earning formula and what, if you if you have calculated the amount on a bi weekly basis you can calculate this 100 dollar on a bi weekly basis and that will be your monthly deductions okay then there could be another garnishment if there is a garnishment then it it is a, it is an alert for us garnishment are going to be child care or divorce you know payment or alimony payment so we always need to check if there is any garnishment that need to be considered as a as an expense like child care right or some some any any other uh any other direction which you think it is a permanent basis or it's not but temporary there could be some uh, you know uh, some some kind of deduction that is uniform deduction so those are one time deductions we know if these are one time deductions it need not need not to be considered but if we come across any garnishment any child care payment any loan amount payment we need to be there there could be 401k accounts 401k deductions okay and insurance but those need not to be deducted because we know that those are, are not the, those are not the loan but those are uh, only uh, a kind of saving right so child care garnishment loan amount alimony amount if those kind of deductions are being up, are appearing in the pay stub we need to be, to need to become alert and those amount should be considered in the loan qualification so okay and the document should be requested from the borrower side so uh, that is all about the uh, pay stubs if you have any question related to pay stub you can you know uh, write in the comment or as you uh, send me the message you can uh, keep sending those messages on the whatsapp as well now we will be uh, uh, discussing about the overtime income bonus income and let's go let's see how to calculate